So today I have a very weird video for you guys, mostly because the things that I'm going to show you aren't things that you're going to be able to use. Well, I mean, you could use them if you wanted to, but you probably won't need to or want to. Instead, I have a very specific purpose for showing you what I'm going to show you today, and that is to get you guys to realize how important bash scripting actually is. So if I make no other point worthwhile in this entire video, take away from it this. If you can, learn bash scripting because it can seriously help you save a ton of time. So today I'm going to show you my five favorite bash scripts that I've ever written. And these aren't overly complex bash scripts or anything like that. I would not consider myself a bash expert or uh, anything like that. In fact, I'd say I'm downright mediocre when it comes to bash scripting. But I enjoy it a lot and I've learned quite a bit over the years. And the ones that I have created are very, very useful. Usually, when I create a bash script, it's because I want to automate something. And I think that really that's the best thing about bash scripting. Yes, there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. But for me personally, the reason why I enjoy it so much is because I can always take something that usually takes me a lot of time or is very repetitious and put it into a bash script. And that allows me to save a lot of time and save a lot of effort. Yes, I have to put effort into creating the bash script, but once that's over with, I can start accumulating that time saved. So today, like I said, I'm going to show you my five favorite bash scripts and maybe somewhere along the line, you guys can gather some inspiration on how you could take bash scripting and automate some of the things that you do. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I have a directory full of bash scripts here, but the first one that I want to show you is my backup script. So this is a script that I use every few days and it's not all that impressive. It just uses Borg to create a date stamped backup. That's all it does. It sets a variable for the date and then it allows me to write when it performs the script to another file so I can keep track in my NeoFetch. So if I go to a scratch pad here and run fast fetch, you can see that I have the date since the last time I did a backup here. So I can kind of keep track of how long it's been since I've done a backup. And that's all this script does. Now, like I said, it's not that impressive. It doesn't do much. There's nothing here I couldn't do by having an alias or a function or something like that in bash RC. But I prefer to have a bash script simply because it does allow me to take this thing with me if I don't happen to have my bash RC file on hand. Also, it's just automatic. So I can go to my terminal here and just run bu.sh and it will run my backup script. That's all it will do. I can enter my password for my, my Borg backup and it will run a backup. That's what it will do. Now, like I said, bash scripts don't have to be this thousand line thing to be useful. Short bash scripts work really well too. So that's one example of a bash script that I use all the time that saves me tons of time because I don't have to remember anything. And like I said, it's very, very portable. Now, the next one on the list is one that I call QTheme. Now, I am a Qtile user. I love Qtile. I return to it all the time. In fact, over the last year, I've basically spent the entire time in Qtile when I wasn't in GNOME or KDE. If I was on a Windows Manager, this is what I was using. Now, I have strayed a few times, but I always return to my fav faithful uh, Qtile and it's very very good but I like to have themes and I like to change themes so I have a script here called Qtheme that allows me to change between all the themes that I've created so you can see a list of all the themes that I've created right here there's many of them if I want to change to a different theme I can just hit a key binding and I can choose like oh I don't know Grubbox and it will change to my Grubbox theme that's what it will do. And that's as simple as it is. Now, is this the most efficient way of changing a theme? Probably not. So basically, let me explain what this does. So I have a set of a whole bunch of variables here. And basically, this is just a whole bunch of file paths for various themes. And most of these here could actually be deleted. I no longer use them. And then I have a array here. I think that's what this is called, it's an array. You guys can tell I'm a, you know, basically a noob when it comes to the terminology. But it allows me to set all the themes that I have, and then it will select that choice and feed it into Rofi, and then I can choose between those choices, right? And then basically what it does is it takes the pre-configured theme config file that I have and copies it over to the location where the Qtile configuration file is. That's really all it does. 
It will also set the Rofi theme for that particular rice. It will set the Dunst theme for that particular theme. And then it will also change the Kitty theme based on the choice that I made as well. And then later on it will also change the wallpaper. So it will change the Qtile theme, it will change the Rofi and Dunst themes and the Kitty theme and the wallpaper. All in one go and it's very very good. So. I have actually done this for every single window manager that I use. This is just happens to be the one that, one that I'm using now. And it's something that I always do because like I said, I want to change themes often. Sometimes I change themes two or three times a day. It's a weird habit, I understand, but it's the way that I like to do things. So being able to change things on the fly via a bash script again is very, very nice. So that's the second one. Okay, so this is one that probably isn't necessary. I'm sure there are tools out there that I could do, or again, I could use an alias or a function or something like that, but I prefer to have a bash script. Again, it's something that I can take with me if I need to, if I don't happen to have my bash RC file somewhere or all my aliases or whatever, right? So this is called Gitter. And all this does is it takes the current Git directory and pushes it up. That's all it does. It will ask you for a commit message and then it will add everything to be committed and then it will commit it. That's what it will do. And it will tell you when it's done. That's, like I said, all it does. I use this thing constantly. So I can be in a Git repository like I am now, run Gitter. It'll ask me for a commit message and it will then it will run Git push just like normal, right? That's all it does. I don't have to do anything else and I can, it doesn't have to, I don't have to remember where the directory is or any of that stuff. It just works really well, and I use it, like I said, all the time. Now, like I said, there are other ways of doing it, but this is the way that I've chosen to do it, and it saves me a bunch of time. So the next one on the list is one that is also Qtile related. Every once in a while, I won't use a dedicated theme, and instead I'll use Pywall. And, and sometimes I don't want to actually have to choose a wallpaper to go with Pipewall, and I would instead like to do a random wallpaper selection. So basically what I've done in this particular script is I will choose a random wallpaper from my wallpapers directory. It will then use Pywall to set that wallpaper and create a color scheme based on that wallpaper, and then it will restart Qtile. If I also use Firefox at that period of time, I can uncomment the Pywall Fox line as well, and that will also change my Firefox theme to match all the color schemes that came from Pywall. What I like about this is that it will actually go through my wallpaper directory and then select a random wallpaper. Now, it's not 100% random. I, so those of you who know Bash know that this is not a good way to do random stuff. It's very, very rudimentary. It will actually only you look for various file names and extensions, right? So it's not gonna look for everything. It also is not going to do a true like random number generator or any of that stuff, right? It's just going to read through them and choose one. So it's not the best, and I know there's better ways of doing it, but this was written a long time ago and I you know, was very, very new. So I still like it. I still use it quite often. I actually, when I'm using my Stream Deck, have a button on my Stream Deck where I can just press it and that will run this script and I can just Every time I want a new theme, I'll just press that button. It'll change the wallpaper, generate a new color scheme, and we're off to go, right? That's really cool. And again, while that doesn't necessarily save me time because I could just not change themes, but uh, I like changing themes and I would do it whether I had this script or not. Therefore, it does save me time. So there's that one. So this is one that I actually wrote n just a few days ago. And it's actually what spawned me to make this video because I'm very, very proud of this particular script. Now, again, there are probably better ways of doing it, but I don't care. So basically what this will do will allow me to create a markdown file that I can then post to my website for an episode of the podcast. So for every episode of my podcast or our podcast, I have to create this type of page. It has the title, it has the YouTube video embedded, it has the fireside audio embedded, it has the show notes, right? Every single one has something like this. And I've got, it, before I would have to create that all manually. I have to do like sudo nvim and then the name of the episode and then .md and then I have to go through and copy and paste all this stuff, right? 
And I was sick of having to do that. So I decided I would script it. And basically what this script does, we can get rid of this now, is it asks me for all the information I need for the particular episode. It'll give me the month, day, and year and all that stuff. It will ask me for the episode number and the season number and the title and the description and the YouTube, all that stuff, right? And then it will construct the date so it puts the date where it needs to go. It will create or it will save a variable of the file path where the marked on file that we're creating needs to be stored. And then basically what it'll do is it will just use cat to create the markdown file contents though what we need. So it'll put the title where it needs to go, the description where it needs to go, it will put the date where it needs to go, and, and then we'll put the show notes and stuff where it needs to go. So I no longer have to create the file. I All I have to do is know what episode number I'm using and the date that it was created and then grab the stuff from YouTube and Fireside. That's all I need to do. And it saves me a ton of time. Like I was able to knock out a whole season's worth of those pages just like lickety split by doing it this way. And it's so good. And this is this script isn't done yet. But, uh, there's also a page. I shouldn't have closed the browser. There's also a page that looks like this. And this is separate. And it's really stupid the way that I do this right now is that I have to go in. And, this is just one big markdown file that has a bunch of links in it. And what I want to do next with this script is when the scripts run successfully, I would like to take the information that I have already stored in the script and put the next episode here in line. So for the, the next one will be season nine, episode one. It should go here with the appropriate heading and everything like that. So that's where I'll be going next with the script. I just haven't got there yet. So those are the top five scripts that I've created. Now, like I said at the beginning, Chances are none of these are going to be things that you're going to ever need, right? These are very hyper-specific to my workflow. Maybe not the Qtile one, but the other stuff. But that's the point here, is that I've created scripts that are very hyper-specific to my workflow, to the way I like to use my computer, like theming and stuff like that, that I do all the time. And it allows me to save time and energy doing those things that I shouldn't probably be doing. Things like the theming. I don't need to spend time changing those themes. I can just hit a button. It'll change it for me because I've created the script. It saves me some time for the superfluous stuff that I do, but also stuff that I actually need to do for the channel or for work or whatever. I can do all that stuff, create a bash script, automate it, and, and it just saves a bunch of time. So, if you got nothing else from this video, and chances are you got very little of it, because again, these are very specific to me, take this away. Try to learn as much bash scripting as you can. You don't have to be good at it, right? You don't have to be spectacular at this or, or learn all of bash, all the syntax, whatever. Learn enough to the point where you can automate some of the things that you do all the time. And even if you don't spend all your time in the terminal, chances are there's a way to do the stuff that you do do all the time in the terminal. You could learn that, script it, automate it. So all you have to do is run a script that will then do the thing that you do all the time. And you will be surprised once you get all that stuff set up that you'll save a bunch of time. Now, will it take some time and effort to actually learn how to do it and get the script written? Yes. But once you've done it, you'll save time. I guarantee it. It's so honestly the best thing that you can do on Linux. Like it's one of the best things that you can do to increase your productivity. I, at least I think so. So anyways, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on all this stuff, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. Uh, the automatic upload stuff for Odyssey is apparently gone now. I'm gonna try to keep uploading over there uh, on, on my own, but my first attempt at doing so was not easy. It definitely wasn't as easy as uploading to YouTube, so we'll see how that continues to go. Um, for now, stuff will continue to go over there, but we'll see. Anyways, that's it for this one. Uh, you can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I don't know if I already said that or not. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now, so thank you so very, very much for your support. I truly honestly do appreciate it so thank you so very very much for your support again if you would like to support me as well patreon.com slash linux cast or youtube or kofi those links will be in the video description you can also head on over to the store which is available at shop at the linuxcast.org there you find also merch like that linux hat back there behind me uh, that i don't wear as much as i probably should but anyways uh shop at the linuxcast.org for all sorts of awesome merch all the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So thank you so very much for your support. Thanks 
everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.